Yes, everybody, welcome to Five. My name is Stephen Alson here with Anton Ferdinand. This is a new show that we're doing for you guys. It's called A Secret Scout. We're going to look at a series of positions. We're going to see who the very best young players are that are coming up in the game at the moment, and we're going to tell you all about them. Anton, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Today, we're going to be talking a little bit about Jude Bellingham. Before we get into Jude, do you want to talk to us about this journey from being maybe identified as being a bit of a young prospect and actually finding yourself as a first-team regular? Yeah, I mean... I signed a um, scholarship at 16. I was training and in the squad for West Ham in the Premier League um, by 17. Um, and then made my debut at 18. But it happened so quickly for me. I come out of school, I just left school. Um, and it was only about, I was training with the first team within four months of being, of leaving school. I trained with the first team. And the reason for that was because I worked hard, you know. I, I was the one that had to drag off the training pitch. If there was a weakness in my game, I worked on it, you know. And, and I made sure that coaches understood and knew that I was ready. And I had to be like that because I was Rio's brother. I knew I was going to get an opportunity, but I knew I had to be ready when that opportunity came. And even to the point of I didn't care what other players had to say about me. Players were saying, oh, Anton's busy, he's... Why is he out on the pitch again? He's busy, he's this, he's that. I'd come in the dressing room and I'd hear bzzz and all that rubbish. But I didn't care because I had a goal. I was focused. But the day that Tony Carr come to me and said, Anton, you're wanted over the road with the first team, I opened that door, walked out and didn't look back. Who's the busy one now, boys? It's not you, it's me. No problem, I'm gone. See you later. Didn't look back. And that's how quick it can happen. You know, you are going to get opportunity if you're good enough. But... Are you ready? Today we're talking about Jude Bellingham, right? Yeah, Jude Bellingham. What a fantastic young talent. Um, a player who possesses speed, power, guile, agility and vision. And it's, that's everything you need to, for the position that he plays. You know, a, a, a player that can do everything. But most importantly for me, I think his mentality is the best part of him. You know, he's someone who speaks like a true, true veteran. But plays with a, young, a youngster's feel, but with an older head. And that's stuff that you can't buy. Um, so Jude pretty much broke onto the scene. He was Birmingham's youngest player ever at 16 and 38 days. Quickly show why he was talented. Um, smashed it in the championship. Got his move to Dortmund. Was heavily linked with moves elsewhere. Went to Dortmund. I think that's proven to be a correct decision for him now. There's talk about him being worth somewhere in the region of 100 million. As you were saying, a true all-rounder. He's played 34 games for Dortmund this season. He's got 18 goal involvements for what I would consider a combative midfielder as well. Not exactly like a playmaking midfielder, someone who's a little bit more combative. Um, in his first season, he played 46 matches across all competitions. Only Hummels and Marco Royce made more appearances from Dortmund. This season, he started every single game for Dortmund. But let's take a look exactly at what makes him the player that he is. So we've got a little pie chart here, which is going to sort of explain what he's about. And this is his actions versus other players in his position. And the first thing that springs to mind is the pink. And the pink is the attacking side of his game. He's, he's in the 95th percentile and above for most of these. Non-penalty uh, non expected goals, massive. Total shots, massive. Assists, 98th percentile. Expected assists, shot creating actions. He's covered all of that lot. The pink, this is his defensive side. As you would probably expect, a lot of pressing, a lot of blocks. Maybe fell off in terms of clearances and interceptions, but you don't typically get that in his position anyway. And then in the orange, we've got what he's like in possession. Progressive passes received, touches in the opposition penalty area, dribbles, which I wasn't something that I was aware of, was so strong in his game. Mm -hmm. Progressive parries, progressive passes. He's an all-rounder. This yeah. is what midfielders are about. 100%. An eight, I'd say, which for me is an all-rounder. That number is an all-round for me, box to box. And, and does a bit of everything. I'd like to see for f his interceptions go up because I think that's a big part of football. When you intercept and when you intercept balls and you're on the front foot, there's more opportunity. So some of his assists and that might go up, even though he's assisted at, eight, at 98, but it could get to the hundreds if you're intercepting the ball. Because if you're intercepting the ball, that means the team's out of shape and you can counteract that so much better, you know? Um, and I think, listen, you, you look at him, his presence all over in every 
every bit of his game, his presence is, is there and thereabouts, you know. And you said about the dribbling complete, completed, and you, 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 you see that as, how's, how's that? But when you look at the goal, remember the goal that he scored, I can't remember who he was against, where he got the ball, a bit of quick feet in the box, and opened up and whipped it into the bottom corner. He possesses that, and he's playing with players like Royce, he played with Sancho, you know, and he sees that day in, day out in, in, in training, and he's obviously adding that to his game. So, as I said, the, the pink here, the attacking actions is something that catches the eye, but I want to show you how much he works. This is defensive actions coming up right here. So, where is he doing his defence? Just everywhere, mate. Yeah. Every I'm... single blade of grass. Maybe could put a bit more work in front right there, <laughs> maybe. If he's probably slacking a bit there. But this is impressive. But do you know what? For someone young, and for any young person who, who's aspiring to be a footballer, this is the most important part. You know, I, I said to young players when I was playing, the only way you're going to play, technically you're very good, technically you're good enough. You know, skill-wise, good enough. Understanding positionally, good enough. But can the manager trust you? That's the biggest thing. And this heat map tells you Jude Bellingham can be trusted because he, he's going to go with his runner in the last minute of the game. You can see that on this heat map. He's going to go with his runner. He's not going to be at fault where runners run off of him in the 89th minute. So... As a manager, I'm looking, can I trust Jude? Of course I can, because the stats and the heat map tells me he's willing to go to the 90th minute for his teammates. Isn't this the thing, though? This is the difference between, and this is where character comes into it, everybody's technical. No one's looking at being a top-flight footballer without being technical. You're all technical. Everybody's athletic, mm -hmm. to a certain degree. Yeah. What separates you is the mentality, right? And at 18 years of age, like you said, he plays... Older than his years. He's 16. Doesn't look like at a 16 young in the championship. Yeah. The championship's hard. The championship is bullish, right? More bullish than, than uh, the Premier League and, and the level that he's playing at now in the Bundesliga. It's bullish. The difference is with Premier League and, and championship is there's more one touch passing, the ball moves quicker. But in terms of the fight, championships, like, it, it's a joke. Mm. He was doing it at 16, you know, coping. embracing it, coping, and coping in there. And by the way, running over people. Not just in there to make the numbers up, he's run over people. And this is why this heat in my fear is telling you everything that you need to know about this, this young man. Right, so anyone can work hard. That doesn't necessarily separate you. It, often it's, it's one of the indicators and it's someone who is working hard. But you often, you need that little bit of extra in your game to make you truly, truly special. I want to talk to you about the playmaking that this kid does. Check this out. So this is his progressive passing that we can see. We know he can dribble, we know he can defend. But look at the playmaking that's going on here. An eye, a bit of vision, a bit of creativity, a bit of confidence. He's absolutely carving. Defence is open, as we can see. Um, 12 assists to go with the six goals he's scored. That's a number eight. Who's not having that in your team? The defensive capability, the mentality, the maturity, and providing double figures assists. That's someone you need in your team. And, and look, look, just look at where he's producing these. You know, he's producing... This, I, as a defender, I and mean, he's not a defender, but as a defender, I never ever liked playing with the ball around here because I, I didn't think I was being effective. If I could get to the halfway line as quick as possible and start playing around here, I knew I could play balls better than some of my midfielders. So I wanted to be here playing balls like what he's playing here, as you can see on the map. And look at the penetration that he's got around this area. It's second to none, you know, and... and I can only, and there's no comparison in terms of the player, but when you talk about young players that come into an environment and express themselves and show what they're about, Mark Noble is the one that, for me, as a kid, he trained with, with the first team for the first time, I think it was at 15, right? And we was doing an indoor session and we're talking about Steve Lomas was in there, John Moncur, Michael Carrick was in there. These are players who, who were senior players and he was in there demanding the ball as a 15 year old. That's the character. The, exactly, but this is why, you look at the career that Mark Noble's had in terms of longevity in the West Ham team, you know, is because of that character. To be able to go, give me the ball and deal with the pressure. This kid here is on a different level. Give me the ball, I'll deal with it, no problem. I'll take the ball by the horns and I'll, and I'll run with it. I'll do this and I'll do that. And we saw that in the interview he'd done after the, the Rangers game, where he came out and said we were below par. But I guarantee you, when we go to Ibrox, it'll be a different game. Pops up and scores two. Also come out and been very critical of referees when he was correct as well. Um, Joey reminds me of a totally different position, 
but I get the same sort of real self-assurance and, and what it, it reminds me of Rooney. And Rooney at one stage where he says on his documentary, I thought I was the best player in the world. No one could tell me anything different. No one could tell me anything different. That type of, of um, character, that type of assurance within himself, that's what makes you a top player. You know, he's going to go through a stage where he's having a bad time. I have no doubt that this young kid here will deal with that in, in the right way. And I think what you've got to look at, and I'll use my own experiences on this, sometimes being outspoken as a young kid sometimes can hinder you. I was very much like that. You know, um, and some managers didn't take it the right way because I was young with a big voice, especially at West Ham. Um, and some managers didn't take too well to that. But I think with this boy here, I can't see because he's he's producing the numbers that he's producing and he's so integral to, to the team. I think him talking that and, and being himself and stamping his authority on teams that he's playing for and players he's playing with. It's part and parcel of his character, and I think you take that out of him, you don't see the same player. Um, a couple of other players, uh, and obviously please get in your, the comments as well. Who's a, a wonder kid, a, a central midfielder that you guys are excited about coming onto the scene? I want to talk to you about Ryan Gravenberch. What's your thoughts on him? I really, really like him. He's got that Patrick Vieira type presence, you know. Um, someone who's very dynamic, box to box. Um, he's powerful, and you know what? Excited, you know what I like about him more than anything. When he gets on the ball, he faces people up in the middle of the park like he's a winger. You know, the only person that I've seen do that and played against that people, someone that does that is Jack Wilshire. You know, when he was on loan on loan at Bolton, right, and I was at Sunderland, he was playing against Jordan Henderson in the middle of the park, and the way he was facing. Um, Hendo up in the middle of the park like he was a winger. Step over, see you later. And he was doing it regular. And I remember in the game going, oh, wow, <laughs> in the game, because that's unheard of. You don't do that in the middle of the park. You do that in the middle of the park and you lose the ball, yeah. you're on to their back, on to the back line. He was comfortably doing that, you know, and the one twos around the box at pace. That's what Ryan's got. Watching his clips, watching him live, and watching him. Um, in, in, in Champions League games, that's what you get from him. But you know what I like about him? He don't mind going back the other way, you know? And again, I spoke about earlier about Jude. The manager can trust him. You might be young, but the manager can trust you. And if the manager can trust you, that goes a long way. Yeah, I think this is a, a, a young man that's just on an absolute certain path to the very, very top of the game. I think he's rumoured to be in for Bayern Munich, which is... That's him going there for the rest of his career, probably, if he ends yep. up there. Um, probably winning absolutely everything. I've got one a little bit closer at home, for me at least, uh, and that's Hannibal Mabry. Um, now, this kid's potential is unlimited. When you look at what he brings on the ball, I don't think there's a doubt. Do you think there's any weaknesses in his game, though? I think the biggest thing, and uh, you, you've hit now on the head, naturally gifted, with the ball, got everything, can the manager trust him? Is his character strong enough? You know, is he someone who, who takes football serious 100%, 24-7? You know, these are the big things that, if, as, as a young player, if you don't have that, you can fall short. You know, he's got an opportunity to play for one of, if not the biggest club in the world. Don't be that person who I shoulda, coulda, woulda played for Man United, but I didn't because my attitude wasn't the best, because I didn't knuckle down, because I, I, I was about the show reel rather than actually my numbers. You know, I think that's one thing that only, that's the one thing that if I had any criticism about Annabel, it would be that. And 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 I hope for his sake and for Man United's sake, by the way, because they could do with someone like him. Oh, he can play any part of the midfield, by the way. You know, and when we talk about Fred and McTominay. He can go in there and maybe take one of their, one of their places and be like a, 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 a deep lining midfielder, a creative, deep creative uh, midfielder for, for Man United. You know, especially if Pogba goes in the summer, he's got an opportunity. Don't waste it. 
Yeah, Hannibal's just been moved into the first team dressing room at Manchester United. Um, finding himself on the bench, not quite getting the minutes that he, he maybe is worth of, worthy of yet. And, and maybe we'll find out what he's about as it comes. But yeah, in terms of the technical ability, we know that. Uh, and that's one thing that you can see in the youth football but you, you need to know if they've got the grit, and that's what Ryan and Jude have got over him at the moment. And not just that, I think what you've got to understand is, for a manager to trust you, it's, all, it's, almost, it's always looking at it as protecting you and all, because if he can't trust you, and you're not mentally strong enough, especially at Old Trafford, oh, yeah. if, 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 if his man runs off of him and he, sco and he scores, 70,000 on your back. 70,000 people in your back. Can you deal with that if you ain't got the character or the mentality to be strong in and around a dressing room? You know, if a player says to you, a first team player says to you, do this, do that, and you're, you're laughing or, you're, or you're, you're not serious about it, how are they going to take you serious when you're on a, on a pitch in front of 70,000 people? You know, I think that's where a manager looks at, can I trust you, also is, can, with that trust, you will be protected because I know you're going to do your job. If not, I'm putting you in the lion's, lion's den. And for some managers, that don't sit well if they, if they don't cope with it. Anton, thank you. Uh, you lot, get in the comments. Let us know what position do you want to see us have a look at in the next one. And, uh, and we'll get a look at them. See you in a bit.